Hello, everybody. So I'll be discussing the ACL avulsion injuries, and I've been asked to talk about the interior tibial avulsion injuries and to see whether, they, whether we need to reconstruct them or save them. Now, I'll be discussing the avulsion of the interior tibial spine. I'll be discussing the classification, the management, and the controversies in the management, and to see if there is any role uh, of primary reconstruction in these cases. Uh, we all know these injuries are quite common, but the, the common age at which the interior tibial spine avulsion presents is around about 8 to 14 years of age, although it can happen in adults as well. The commonest mechanism of injury is the fall of a bike, and as such, in doing examination, we need to examine the knee as a whole to exclude other ligamentous injuries. Uh, the classification which is commonly used for these injuries is the Mayer and McEwer classification, uh, which basically divides it into four types. The type one is undisplaced fracture. The type two is the fracture in which there is a, uh, there is a posterior contact, but on the interior side, the fragment is lifted. Type three are the displaced fractures, and type four are the fractures in which, uh, um, in which the fracture is uh, comminuted. The goals of treatment in these is basically anatomical reduction, stable fixation, and the important thing is we have to mobilize this patient early uh, in order to decrease the chances of complications. The treatment is fairly straightforward and probably type one in which we treat uh, with immobilization, but it is recommended that you spread the hematoma as well. The treatment of type two generally is, uh, is a bit controversial, while type three and four are being treated as op uh, been treated operatively. Uh, the type two fractures generally, if they present within the, f for the first 48 hours with less than five millimeter displacement, then they can be treated with an MU and POP. But if we, if we look at the literature, then we can find out that, that, the, that, that the chances of it being treated, so it's just going on by its own, uh, gradually, uh, people, are, people are operating more on all these type two fractures as they were maybe a few years before. But the, the thing is that if you treat them conservatively, then you have to get a post-op MRI as well to make sure that the fragment has been reduced properly. A study which was done by Charles which compared the results of operative fixation with conservative in 43 of type two uh, avulsion fractures, uh, and, then, uh, and then he sort of, uh, and they follow. Now what he found was that the patients, sorry, the patients who were treated conservatively had, the patients who were treated conservatively had more laxity and there were significant differences in IKD scores and license scores. The type three and four fractures, they are, uh, the, the, the commerce, in, the commerce uh, treatment is basically operative, but then we come to the operative, then we've got controversies whether we should treat them by open induction or, or arthroscopic fixations, or arthroscopic fixation. And if you are going to fix them, then how are you going to fix them, and what should be the post-op rehabilitation regime? When we come to the operative reduction, one of the commonest problems in these is the entrapped meniscus or the intermeniscal ligament. And sometimes it may be quite difficult sort of to, keep, to get this meniscus out of the way. You can either use a hook or you can put a, put a vital suture uh, by the same technique you do the outside in uh, meniscal repair and just lift it off with the help of a, with the help, uh, with the help of a vital suture. When it comes to the fixation, then we've got different options. We've got the screws, which can be placed both in uh, anti-grade and retrograde. We can have the double button tie tropes, the anchor sutures, and the pull-out sutures. Uh, the screws, they are generally less demanding than the suture fixation, um, properly or cheaper as well, and provide uh, possibly early mobilization. But one of the big problems that we see later are that these screws tend to be removed, uh, uh, tend to be removed more frequently. Plus, you also need, sorry, computer is playing games with me. Uh, plus, plus majority of these cases, you, you need a proper uh, sort of a bigger osteochondral fragment 
for the screws to go in. And in a quite a, quite a big majority of these patients, uh, there can be impingement if the screw is not uh, placed properly. Uh, uh, screw fixation uh, is, is not te technically difficult. You can do it both openly and arthroscopically. So the screws can be put both by open reduction and arthroscopically. You need to put in two wires uh, to hold it in place and then you place both, the, both, both or one of the wires uh, with, a, uh, with a four millimeter attenuated screws. It's ideally to, better to put in two uh, screws rather than one. And this is sort of a, well, the important thing in these screws is if the epiphysis is still open, then you should not cross the, uh, the, the epiphysial plate, which can sometimes be a problem and you should try to remove it maybe as, as early as possible. Uh, double button tight rope can also be used in the places of, uh, uh, places of screws. They are generally easier to apply as compared to, the, uh, compared to screws. And the next one, we can have the suture fixation. They are both, uh, now this is the one technique which can be for both large and small fragments. There's a minimal damage to the physis, but then again, these, uh, uh, this technique is a technically demanding procedure. Uh, and you can do it by different ways. One of the commonest ways which we do it is by using a, using a lasso, uh, putting at least two sutures uh, across the, at the base of the tendon or the bone. And then what you can do is you can either sort of uh, pull it out through a tibial tunnel outside and, and sort of stitch it on the top of the button. Or you can use a, you can use a knotless uh, anchor and sort of fix it inside the knee joint. Uh, we're also hearing about an all epiphyseal tibial spine fracture in which actually you pass the suture through the, uh, through the physis, not going through the growth plate at all, and then fix it. And then fix, and then fix it just near the tibial tuberosity with, a, uh, with an anchor suture. But the other thing is, is there a difference between an open and closed means or any, uh, is there any difference between the different fixation methods we used. A study which was done by Schimler, which was published in 2022, they had about 477 patients, of 420 were treated with arthroscopic fixation, 57 with an open reduction with an average follow-up of about one to 12 years, and they did, not, they did not demonstrate any difference either in the clinical outcomes or the non-union rate between arthroscopic and open reduction. However, what they did find was that if you do an arthroscopic reduction, you tend to find a higher rate of concomitant injuries, like meniscal injuries uh, in these patients. Another paper was done by Chaid. Again, he compared the open versus arthroscopic fixation. There was only 13 patients, 13 ratio 18. Uh, in, the, in, in their group of patients, they, 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 they showed that open reduction uh, was better than arthroscopic reduction, but if you look at the paper closely, uh, what they said was that actually the arthroscopic uh, fixation itself is not an independent risk factor, but with the patients who are having arthroscopic fixation in their study tended to wait longer as compared to the open reduction, and they, and they found out that if the surgery is, is delayed for more than seven days, and if the operative time is more than 120 minutes, uh, then there's a, this is a significant risk of uh, the development of arthrofibrosis. Now when you come to fixation, which fixation issue should be the screws or the suture fixation? A uh, biomechanical uh, study which was, which was done in which they used uh, 15 fresh cadavers for knees and they used, uh, uh, they used three different fixation methods, uh, the anti-grade screws, the the anti-grade use, the retrograde screw fixation, and the pull-out sutures, uh, and therefore their biomechanically anti-grade fixation was biomechanically more effective as compared to the uh, pull-out suture fixation for ACL evulsions. Karen, in uh, 2019, again, sorry, again compared the, uh, compared the results of screw fixation to suture fixation, uh, uh, in 67 of his patients with a minimal follow-up of 12, of 12 months. And again, he did not find any difference in regards to, to any of the clinical parameters which he, which then, 
But what he did found, sorry. But what he did found was that the patient group of the screw fixation had more reoperations, uh, and a large number of these operations were were uh, because of uh, were for implant removal. Uh, the same result was sorry, the same result was also given by Chang in 2022. Uh, again, 184 patients, 91 versus 93, a fairly sort of matched group. And again, he had the same six clinical results, the same but significantly high overall subsequent surgery rate and implant implant removal rate. However, the non-implant related uh, subsequent surgery rates were similar for these for both these patients. When we come to the post-op rehabilitation, I think the one of the most important things to prevent arthrofibrosis is initiation of knee motion within the first four weeks. And this is considered very important. And this is one of the reasons that if you, if you are going to do a fixation, then you should be able to mobilize the, patient, the knee as early as possible. Delaying it for more than four weeks is going to cause problems. Again, uh, Again, if the surgery time is more than uh, is more than 120 minutes, again it's the same thing. Complications after fibrosis, especially in arthroscopic surgery, the the, uh, the rate is there. There is some ACL laxity as well. The anterior drawer tends to be positive in, in about 20 to 60 percent of these patients, depending upon which study you look at. Uh, sorry, the pivot shift test will be positive in about 88 to 40 percent of the patient and about 20% of these patients will probably end up needing an ACL reconstruction. Another important question is, is there any role of a primary reconstruction in anterior, sorry, anterior uh, tibial spine evolution? I look at the, all the literature and unfortunately, uh, I could not find any role of a primary reconstruction in these injuries. So in summary, anterior tibial spine fractures have to be handled carefully Early fixation and mobilization is important. It's, uh, we, we can do both arthroscopic and uh, uh, arthroscopic and open reduction. But any surgery which is uh, which is delayed for more than 120 minutes, or if the mobilization is delayed for more than 120 minutes, uh, uh, four weeks, then it will cause problems. And there is no role of primary reconstruction in these patients. Thank you for your attention.